Today's webinar is titled, Innovative Lifting Experience with Synthetic Fiber Technology. We are just delighted to have Sammy Munaswamy from Manitowoc Cranes with us on the line today. And he's going to lead our discussion on synthetic fiber technology, and more specifically, using that technology above the hook. It was about one year ago um, at Con Expo that Samson and Manitowoc kind of went public with this announcement with the KZ100. And uh, yeah, Sammy's going to be here to, uh, to dig more, dig deeper into that. So let's not waste any time and, uh, and get started here. So very briefly, let me introduce ITI to those of, us, those of you joining us for the first time. The best way to summarize, I guess, and keep this short is to say, we strive to be the, the go-to for all things crane rigging and load handling. Um, as our name suggests, hopefully that's on a global level. And certainly we face a ton of barriers, language, uh, logistic issues, things like that to overcome, but we strive to work very hard every day to overcome these obstacles. So here's the engine that really keeps ITI driving forward. Our team of technical experts, uh, they each come from a unique professional background that helps serve them as instructors and as consultants. We currently have trainers and consultants that hail from the United States, Canada, and Brazil. And I wish I could talk about every single one of these guys more in depth, but you can view a full profile on each instructor by visiting iti.com slash team. So the Showcase webinar series, that's why we're here. It's still going strong. Um, for two, over two years now, ITI has offered free technical webinars focusing on a singular crane rigging or load handling topic. And again, I believe it started in March of 2013, so yeah, two years going strong. You can see the previous, just a few of the previous topics on the slide there, um, they're all available to be viewed, the recordings of each presentation. If you visit iti.com slash webinars, and then you click on the View Past Webinars link, a very short form, uh, and then you have access to all of the past webinars. Um, and you, you'll want to bookmark that page so you can refer to it at any time. It contains the recordings, the PDF presentation files and any subsequent um, materials if we sent those out before. So it's a great resource. Um, today's presentation is obviously uh, we're going to focus on the synthetic fiber technology and mark on your calendars March 17th, I believe it's a Tuesday, we're going to have uh, Keith Anderson and Monty Chisholm from Bechtel on the line and the topic will be taglines and load control. So that should be a good one. So I can't stress enough how thankful we are to have Sammy from Manitowoc joining us. Again, he's, uh, he's accomplished a lot in over 35 years of, of being an engineer. He's been at the forefront of and management development at Manitowoc for a number of projects, obviously, including uh, the use of synthetics above the hook. Um, Sammy, again, thank you so much. Uh, that's all I have, thankfully. Um, and I am going to turn things over to you. All right, so we, we can see your screen. I think you're good to go, Sammy. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Jana. I, I really appreciate the relationship that we started with the ITI and the opportunity to give this presentation to the audience. To our audience today, good afternoon or good morning, depending upon where you are at at this point of time. Um, I'm really excited and highly motivated uh, than ever because I am going to share an innovative lifting experience co-created by Manitowoc and Samson. Samson is our innovation partner based in Ferndale, Washington State. 
and uh, I am from Manitoba company. We all, all of you are very familiar, uh, the great company that manufactures cranes. Um, our headquarters is in Wisconsin. I am here from Shady Grove, Pennsylvania, one of the manufacturing divisions of uh, Manitowoc company. Innovative lifting experience with the synthetic fiber technology. Um, lifting experience I call and um, with the fiber it is not new. In fact, nothing new under the sun. I am always inspired by, by, by Mother Nature so 3.8 billion years of uh, innovative experience for the happiness of mankind. In fact, man started making rope out of uh, fiber, natural fiber, obviously, 10,000 years ago. When he learned how to increase the strength and performance of the, of the fiber rope, and then in fact, high performance, high strength the fiber uh, they found uh, using plants, also the vegetables, etc. Then they learn a lot of lessons out of the technology. Then that is a technology that uh, after so many years uh, in the planet, everybody even from um, developing countries or even here in the United States, still people use uh, fiber for some applications. So that is a rich experience that uh, very basis for uh, our technology, what we developed. For the past 30 years, the fiber below the hook, industry is using it. That the sling, in the form of sling, fiber sling, made out of polyester, nylon, um, braided rope slings, etc., been used in about 30 years. Now, understanding all the technologies so far, it is a time for us to put fiber, high strength, high modulus, a different kind of fiber uh, above the oak. That's what this story is all about. It is a very interesting story co-created by Samson and uh, Manitoba combined together. And then that gives a fun and a rewarding experience for our operators and also our uh, customers in the field. This gives an overview of Manitowoc lifting experience with the fiber. You can see here the different type of capacity cranes starting from 15 ton, 25 ton cranes, 70 ton cranes, uh, 40 ton, uh, these are one uh, 30 ton cranes, all the way up to our uh, European crane, which is, this is a GMK 4100, uh, 400, about 400 ton cranes. Those are the cranes to be tested here at our facility here, and also we implemented in the field. From Pennsylvania to Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. In fact, this picture we took at Pearl Harbor. And uh, also from Ammon, Indiana, this crane here, to Italy, one of our uh, facilities in Italy. This picture, in fact, we took uh, at our facility in Italy. So, in fact, next month we are going to Hero uh, in Germany, our facility over there, to implement um, synthetic rope with um, European units. John already mentioned about the our trade show. Um, most of you are familiar that um, Manitowoc displayed synthetic rope in one of our cranes here in Con Expo, Las Vegas, last year. And uh, this is uh, from Australia. We also displayed synthetic fiber rope in one of our um, European cranes in Australia. This gives a very high level of the different type of crane models, different job site, and then uh, and also the trade shows. So many things we are doing, 
And I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I'm sharing this technology uh, to other uh, audience who are not familiar with the synthetic rope. Um, this will give you an uh, understanding and uh, maybe you can get some experience about synthetic rope. This is an innovative lifting experience with the synthetic fiber technology. Before getting into the detail, I thought it may be appropriate time for me to define innovation. The innovation is most familiar word, familiar um, thing heavily used by people, various medias and you know uh, different industries. They have their own way of defining innovation. So this is my way of defining innovation. Innovation is people creating experience through connection and implementation of ideas for disrupting the status quo and uh, staying ahead. The key here is the people. It is not the, uh, the brand name of any company or the building or the um, materials or um, robots or missionaries that creates the experience or that creates value. The people, that's why I put people first. Ultimately, whatever you do, you are creating experience. This is the 21st century. We are uh, experience-based economy. The experience is dominating the planet. Uh, before it was starting from commodities, goods and services. Now it is the experience in 21st century. But some, of, some, some people approach 21st century problem with the same industrial mind attitude and mindset that is not going to work. It is like playing tennis with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, other uh, material. So it is just um, it doesn't it's not fitting together. So. The agenda of the today discussion is starting with the why synthetic fiber technology. Rather than starting with the what is KZ100 or synthetic rope, I'm just going the other way. Why synthetic fiber technology and then how the technology meets industry needs and then it is how it is tested, how we develop the technology, how first of all how we define the value proposition. So all the hours are all process related things. Then why is the, like um, uh, the value, the experience that we are creating, and then the what is actually the, ultimately the product. So that's how I'm just taking the other, the inside out communication about this technology. Starting with um, why synthetic fiber technology for cranes. Industry trend, we all know, it is constantly changing. There is only one constant, the change is the only one constant that never changes. The trend is changing. And also, for the past uh, one decade, the trend is changing so fast compared to uh, previous uh, years in our lifetime. So it means the trend changes that creates a need. If the uh, different need or new need for the people. That, that need creates a gap. So in this case, our industry trend, the need is superior lifting experience. That I believe customer need su superior lifting experience. For that, the opportunity or gap, whatever you call it, those are the five things that I thought we need to fill in. Lighter, portable, and user-friendly equipment, fun and rewarding crane operation. Crane operation traditionally considered as a you know hard, harsh environment and dealing with the equipment, etc. So we have to be empathy-based, uh, put ourselves in operator shoes, and also uh, in the job site uh, people, and then see how we can make their day-to-day -day operation fun and rewarding. Um, that is the, one of the consideration um, 
uh, in this project. In a summary, lightweight user-friendly equipment is not an option anymore, not a fancy thing. It is absolutely necessary, it is necessary to remain competitive and meet industry needs. I like this slide all the time. You can see here the fiber rope puts a smile on operator's face. Look at this guy smiling here. Um, and the, the, the other guy in the left, on the right hand side, he's uh, lifting that rope just one hand because it's about 29 kilograms. For the same length of the rope, wire rope, the existing experience, I'm just comparing the existing experience with this versus the new experience. That's what this presentation is all about. I mean, um, you never know that there is a lighter rope out there that will make his job easier without any other, um, like a pork lift or any other crane for assisting him to lift this, um, uh, to handle this rope. Um, that's a, a key thing here. It is not only um, make uh, the operators uh, happy and easy on the operators, also it is easy on the crane, on the equipment itself. You can see on the right hand side, the wire rope ab damaged the roller here, like abrasion. Uh, so the synthetic rope, because of this, is a smooth, malleable, and ductile, so um, nice. So it is very uh, rare that it's going to damage the equipment. So it is uh, helping the operator and also uh, easy on the equipment. These are the key things, different experience that we are bringing out here, we found. Now I'm going to show the video. This is the, uh, this video will show you how it is fun and rewarding working experience with this fiber rope. Quick and easy installation from ground lower. It's a very short video here. He is throwing on the top of the crane with the wire rope. If you throw that, it may rub against the paint and also may damage the, uh, the crane. This job site environment is really a uh, fun working environment the way we experience it. Look at that guy here, he's destroying <laughs> out there. Now he's catching and then just going to uh, install on the drum, hoist drum. He's not wearing any gloves because it is very smooth. But use um, emotional connection. Yeah. For other people, this is the rope. To me, it is the emotional connection between the operator and then the equipment because, because it's so um, uh, simple and also it is a nice, uh, smooth to skin, easy to touch. Because of that, the operator is so deeply connected with the, uh, with the equipment. Here's the another slide here, video that shows video. In this slide, that improves job site complacency, I call. On the left hand side is the synthetic rope, on the right hand side is the wire rope. Because of the torque neutral construction of the synthetic rope, 
there is no spinning or cabling. But on the, on the other hand, on the right hand side, the wire rope, you can see the cabling. That is a nuisance for the operators in the job site. They have to go and um, unspin it, fix that one. It takes uh, time. Um, so that became a second nature for many, many years. And then uh, it is uh, no more complaints from the operator. Not only just the one example, there are many examples uh, I saw in the, oper uh, in the job site. Some of you are also similarly seeing that. I call as a complacency. So in a way, the synthetic rope provides a different experience. And then, uh, then I say it improves the job site complacency in a way. Now going back to our uh, presentation here, again. Now we are going to see how fiber rope meets industry needs. For crane operation, there is a lot of um, bend cycles in, in temperature, a heavy tension load, um, and also it involves um, uh, handling, heavily handling, etc. So these are the key factors essential uh, for the crane operation. The modulus, which is the resistance to stitch or elongation, uh, breaking strength for, a, for lifting heavy load, and then a creep, which is a temperature, time, and tension over a period of time, how much it is at the stitches, and then ultraviolet, and then abrasion resistance, uh, people thought, oh, fiber means it is going to uh, fade out, you know. Then we tested, uh, Samson tested the UE abrasion resistance. The abrasion is the key thing here because the rope has to um, touch many contact points starting from drum, the, the entire, uh, I call it a lifting system. Um, a hoisting system, the shoe, um, hook block, etc. So therefore, abrasion resistance um, is a key characteristic, one of the key characteristics of the of this rope. Of course, um, bend fatigue and cost are also important factors we consider. There are so many um, fibers available in the market, and then you can see here the high performance and high modulus fibers, those are the four. HMP, there's a Dynema is a brand name. High modulus polyethylene or high molecular weight polyethylene, whatever you call it. That's one of them. And then the, the Vectran, the second one is Vectran. Liquid crystal polymer. Then the Aramid and, and Xylon, the last one is Xylon. Those are the four high performance high modulus fibers we are we considered uh, at the beginning then in order to compromise or in order to optimize the design cost performance benefit we selected first two is a branded uh, hybrid hybrid version of the of the fibers combined together we made this uh, rope Some of the character, physical and then mechanical properties here, just a few of them just for, for information I dis, I'm displaying here. You can see the high modulus polyethylene dynema fiber predominantly we use. The density is less than 1, which is a 0 0.97, which is a lighter. And then the tenacity, which is, a, this is the measure of strength, which is the um, Yarn stands for weight. That is a GPD. It stands for gram per dynier. Dynier is the industrial um, a unit, textile unit. So among all the fibers, the HMP has the lowest weight, and also it has a strength, and also the the elongation also is a less. And uh, therefore, I call it uh, HMP uh, fiber. We when the, we use this fiber to make the rope. 
the rope is lighter than water and stronger than steel. That's how I put it in a very layman's terminology. Now you saw that one is so light people can handle without any uh, extra equipment. Here is an example, a real example of the RT770E, one of our train models. Um, these are the parameters of the rope. The same hoist system including shiv, drum, hook lock, no change, we are using the same thing. It is a direct replacement for steel wire rope. Um, it's just uh, approximately about 3 millimeter over size than the steel, normal steel wire rope. For example, if it's 90 millimeter wire rope we use uh, in our crane, then the synthetic rope will be a little over size than that. Then after training the rope, it will reduce the, size, the, the, the diameter. Training meaning when you tension the rope before using, then it will uh, reduce about one or two millimeters, but still it is going to fit the same uh, uh, hoisting system. That's the key. Braking strength about 38 uh, tons, according to this uh, ISO 2307. Samson tested. Um, the key here is the maximum line pull. At uh, we are giving, we are keeping the same maximum line pull close to wire rope at five to one safety factor. The elongation is about 1.2 at the maximum line pull. If somebody not familiar with maximum line pull here, I'm talking about the 20% of the minimum uh, braking strength. So if you take 20% of the braking strength, which is at 38 ton, then that is the at that it is elongation is about 1.2, which is sim close to similar to wire rope. So the fiber rope people thought that, oh, it is like a rubber band, it is going to stretch, etc., etc. The load is going to be coming down, it is not going to stay the same level, etc., etc. Then people are worried about that. That is a misconception about the, the fiber rope that we found, but that's not the case. Once you train the rope, then it is going to be similar to, to wire rope. And then the construction is about 12 strand, torque neutral about a six strand in one direction, the other six strand the other direction. So that because of that uh, unique construction, Samson came out, and that gives a torque neutral construction, which is even better than the rotation resistant wire rope. And then uh, just I give a rough calculation to, uh, to appreciate how much weight saving for, the, for this model. For the RT770, which is a 70 ton crane, we saved about 1,292 1, pounds. It definitely, we believe that it is a significant weight saving, particularly we are using this rope in our above the hook, which is we call as a superstructure. It means a lot for as a crane manufacturer for us from design point of view. Uh, most important thing is that because it's 83 percent lighter, means a lot for our uh, people in the job site, for our customers. Now next question is, okay, how it meets the industry needs that we are talking about, that's what we are talking now. So what about the chemical um, resistance of this rope? Well, we tested all the industrial chemicals, grease and oil that you name it, and then there's some other things listed here from Samson's catalog. And then you can see here, uh, the synthetic rope, what we design, is a highly chemically inert, not affected by common acid, base, or oil. So you can see on the, in the left-hand side, even the sulfuric acid. But however, there are certain specific solvents that uh, you are using in your job site uh, that need to be uh, consider and you have to uh, touch base with uh, Samson to get some other more detail about the solvent. The inspection. Similar inspection events as with the wire ropes, starting with the daily inspection and monthly inspect, full line inspection, etc. So um, the daily inspection prior to uh, any uh, shift 
mainly focuses on high bend zone areas, plant contact points, crossover points, and the repetitive pickup points on the on the hoist drum. Basically, the high bend zone area, wherever it touches the uh, the hoist system, including the shoe, the operator has to pay attention daily. Monthly periodic pull line inspection, focusing on gross operation and then damage level, uh, broken core here, and is the, because of the highly malleable and ductile nature, you can unmilk, I call it the, uh, unmilking the, the rope, and then you can um, uh, push, like you are you're taking your finger and then see inside the, the core. That is what I'm meaning. I, I mean by checking on the on the core also. In the wire rope, you cannot check the core. And then obviously there's a chemical discoloration that maybe you can check on that. In addition to that, as usual, we recommend operators to maintain inspection and log and record their findings. The right hand side, it is this picture took a bit, we, we took this picture in Italy uh, while inspecting the rope, full line inspection. The retirement criteria, just a, I'm going to give some sample here that is developed by uh, Samson after working with us. We have been working with the Samson for more than two and a half years now. In fact, we are uh, Manitowoc, we are working on this technology for five years. And for the past two and a half years, it is a very big uh, shift after Samson involvement as an innovation partner. They developed the retirement criteria baseline based on their experience with the uh, with, uh, uh, tugboat, marine industries, mining industries, and also with the fishing industries. Those are the a rich experience, more than 100 years experience Samson um, is uh, acquired and then their, um, with their experience they develop the the abrasion measurement. That is the ma main failure mode of the fiber rope. So abrasion measurement is a visual comparison chart. You can see here from 1 to 4. So the Beyond four, that is a, that's what the retirement criteria, we have to retire the rope. Are you, is there any doubt or anything else? Maybe we can contact, you know, for, uh, for a detailed discussion. But uh, based on our experience so far, in the field experience, and then the battery of tests we conducted, we are going to see in a minute. So we believe that beyond four, up to four is okay. Beyond four, we need to consider for retirement. This is another example of the retirement criteria. You cut stand. For example, here is a pull the stand that you can uh, unmilk. Pull this one, the the stand somewhere else here, and then we can fix this. But however, these are the uh, different. Um, um, situation that we need to consider for retirement or we ought to inspect that. Now we, so far we, 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 we see many things about synthetic rope. Now how, people are asking how we test it, how do we know this is good for crane application in the job site. So we tested the efficacy and the reliability of synthetic rope by conducting a battery of tests that you see on the screen. Starting from spooling test, how the synthetic rope spools on the drum, on the hoist drum, and then put the rope on the machine and then uh, calibrate it. So it's calibration test, tensile brake test, tension fatigue testing, cyclic bend over shoe testing, um, and then also the elevated temperature testing we know the crane is working in different um, uh, temperature environment, so we tested also that. 
and an accelerated UV exposure test and uh, accelerated life cycle simulation, et cetera, et cetera. So we also uh, uh, tested a job site, not only in the lab at the Samsung and also uh, the fiber manufacturer um, in DSM in Netherlands. We tested here in our job site and um, in our company here and it uh, at users and rigors at our plant level and also the field environment level. The summary of the test, all the tests that include so far up to January, the, the, the testing hours total is of 5,000 hours of test. Total cycles, about 95,000 cycles. So if you put all the ropes together, try to understand how much length is, it is about six miles. So that gives an understanding about how much test we have done, and then uh, that gives uh, our comfort level, that improved our confidence level up for our application. This gives a break up information about the about 94,000, close to 94,000 cycles, tension, fatigue, reliability, and cycle, uh, life cycle comparison test. The right hand side you can see it at our facility. Uh, this picture we took that one during um, uh, testing, reliability testing. The key here is the uh, product verification center we call as a PVC. Um, Manitowoc testing facility, one of the key capability what we have is the product verification center, which is about seven acres of test area for full crane testing. You can see here, um, this is one of the test pads. We have many, many test pads for full crane testing. This is the main building. Inside the building there are many uh, labs um, and also we have a trained, highly qualified, educated technician and test engineers. Um, you can see some example here. And then uh, the strategy of uh, PVC is develop upfront verification activities to elevate product design, to evaluate, sorry, to evaluate product design and uh, supplier components. So I am very proud to say that without this uh, product verification center, but recently we built this uh, facility uh, and then we would not have uh, come to this point in order to verify and validate synthetic rope. So verification and validation is a different thing. So verification is verifying the design intent, which in turn, um, customer point of view, what is that we need to consider in our design in order to uh, be, make sure that it is useful at the uh, customer job site. So that is what uh, the verification is. The validation is make sure that we are uh, doing the again, 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 many, many times in a production environment. That is the difference between verification and validation. We do our product validation also at our job site. And uh, as a part of that uh, of verification, we take our crane, our, our IPD process, we develop our crane, we take it to the job site, and then test in the field to get the customer feedback how our crane is performing in the field. So um, we are following, we followed the same IPD process, use synthetic rope in our job site and then validated the efficacy and then reliability of the synthetic rope. Here I would like to share the actual test data, our PVC, um, provided. The synthetic rope tested against wire rope 
These are the two samples here. You see that the synthetic rope outperformed uh, wire rope. Here in the wire rope, very specifically I have to say it is a non-rotation resistant wire rope. About three to six times a higher life. That was really a um, surprising result for us. We know it is going to outperform, but uh, we never know it is going to be outperforming uh, significantly compared to rotation, non-rotation resistance wire rope. See, is an example of the spooling and um, this picture here that shows the wire rope Again, non-rotation resistant, resistant wire rope um, after retirement. This is, a, this is the reason we retired the rope. So we're just comparing apple to apple, try to the same uh, testing condition, test plan, same operator, same equipment. We tested synthetic rope, try to compare how much it is uh, performing um, compared to wire rope. Is another test, different kind of test? Synthetic rope versus not only the non-rotation wire rope and also rotation resistant wire rope. And then because the rotation resistant wire rope is very close to synthetic rope, synthetic rope is a torque neutral um, wire or rope. So here again, like before, the synthetic rope outperformed non-rotation resistant wire rope and it is um, very close to rotation resistance wire rope in terms of cycles. This is just an example to uh, just for for all of you to understand how the synthetic rope will be um, at the abrasion. You know that the failure mode is mainly due to abrasion. That's why it is very important to make sure the, the surface condition of the, the hoist system, wherever the rope touches, it should be um, smooth. Here's an example, the picture that shows the rotation resistant, this is a non-rotation resistant, this is a rotation resistance wire rope that we retired after this cycle. This picture shows the just comparison between the wire rope and the synthetic rope. How the failure mode uh, of uh, the failure mode of wire rope is um, fatigue, and then the failure mode of synthetic rope is uh, abrasion. The, the predominant failure mode. What I mean by that. This is a very interesting results. It is a simulation testing synthetic rope versus a wire rope. Again, this is a rotation resistance wire rope versus synthetic rope. Synthetic rope here. Then the synthetic rope outperformed about, uh, you can see, close to 19,000 cycle compared to 14,000 cycle of the wire rope. Um, the, the simulation testing, what I mean by this is the accelerated simulation test, called as a reliability testing, very close to um, a job site environment for various uh, train configuration, load, speed, et cetera, et cetera, that we tested. We found that the, the rotation resistant wire rope damaged at this cycle. That answers a lot of people questioning about how wire rope versus synthetic rope, the performance wise, the life cycle wise. Now, we took this rope to our innovation partner. Again, this innovation partner here is our customers in the field, like I said before, from Pennsylvania to Pearl Harbor, and from Indiana to Italy. Um, you can see various job sites. We installed the rope, trained um, operators, and um, studied how the rope is behaving in the job site environment. Uh, that is a very good uh, uh, um, feedback for us um, for, for further improvement. 
So about close to 1,677 total lifts so far up to January. At this time, I really sincerely appreciate all our uh, customers who helped us, are helping us even today uh, to, they're all, I call as the innovators and early adopters. I really appreciate their leadership, innovative leadership, and then uh, in, in using this uh, rope at very early stage. The interesting here is the, um, our uh, US Navy at Pearl Harbor as well as the Newport News here. Those are our interesting um, uh, customer. Uh, we are really extremely happy about their cooperation and help try to give us a feedback about the performance of this rope. Now the question comes, how we did it? How we developed this technology? This is something um, different, new to the industry, particularly for lifting. And because of complex technology like this, I believe that more than R&D, it is C&D. I call it the connect and develop is the key for the success of this project. So connect and develop is the smart people working in our company. But not all the smarter people in the world work for us. That is a fact. So it is we are smart enough to try to go reach out beyond our company, try to find out smart people, and their knowledge and experience bringing back to our company, and then take our more than 100 years of our Manitowoc experience, put together, co-create. That's what I mean by co-creation. And more than that, we also building the innovation ecosystem, I call. So it, it is uh, beyond our innovation partners, uh, Samsung and uh, our, our customers. We're also involving our training institute like ITI today. Um, um, thank you very much for, for involving us, our innovation uh, partners, helping us to disseminate this knowledge. And also our standard committees. ASME B3030 committee and uh, other um, training institute, um, our, our dealers. Uh, in one way or the other, people involved in lifting, ex lifting uh, business, we are going to be involving all of them uh, to understand this technology and then uh, how much we can improve further in turn to improve the the job site efficiency, and then the day-to-day -day, uh, life of the operator. That's our goal. So here, Manitowoc, the training technology, Samson, the rope and coating technology, DSM and Crory, these are the companies uh, making fibers, the fiber technology, and then our customers, we, we discussed about that, that's a lifting technology from them. Five years of our development activities, verification and validation and testing, et cetera, et cetera, all combined together that uh, we are able to create a, a different lifting experience with the fiber. The other important point I would, I would say here is the design thinking approach. Design thinking is not thinking about design, the design thinking. There's a uh, different way of uh, developing or innovating a new product. So design thinking is integrating lightweight lifting equipment technology, feasibility, the market viability, and uh, people desirability. So just integrate all together uh, in a system thinking approach, come up with a, uh, a, 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 an experience that people can use it. That's what design thinking approach we, we are now um, implementing it. Now, how we define the value proposition? 
you can see that we already saw that um, 80 percent lightweight LCZ and no grease but oil etc that makes the operator happy and then also here you can see good to good for a gold weather package due to 10 percent increase in strength so what that means to a job site which is return on investment less than one year and you reduce the maintenance cost there's no maintenance less maintenance or less maintenance required the customer normally don't know what they need until you show a different experience I love this I experienced that uh, while discussing with our operators seeing myself this operator here he said that once you started using it and then uh, then he was very reluctant to go back to a steel wire rope. That's what he told me. And then uh, you can see how he's um, reading this from, from, from standing from the ground level. So that is a, uh, so they don't know about this until they see this. Uh, they are, they were able to understand how much difficult it is when you are, when, when they were handling the wire, existing wire rope, the existing experience. I call it the uh, finding, understanding and misunderstanding uh, is a common notion people misunderstood about the synthetic rope on the left hand side. Then after five years of experience, uh, we understood differently. So that is not exactly right. Just an example, lack of strength, the synthetic rope. That's not true. The strength is compared to wire rope. We already saw that. And then new technology, to me, nothing new under the sun. Again, I say that. It's about 10,000 years of old. The fiber sling also used for 20, 30 years. So, so it is a question of putting fiber above the hook. And um, that technology is developed based on the um, existing technology with the fiber rope. Same thing with the wire rope, misunderstanding and understanding. See here, rotation resistant, easy to handle, etc. We see, we all know that uh, that has the limitations. The spins and cabling, board gauging is it is, is there with the wire rope, and um, maintenance is required, etc. Now, what is KC100? KC is a KC100 is a synthetic rope made from combination of high-performance fiber braided in a torque neutral construction. It is designed to offer a fun and rewarding lifting experience with the similar, st similar strength at the one-seventh weight. Improved bending fatigue, durability, and a robust spooling capabilities compared to steel wire rope. And then KC100, KC stands for Karim Ziyad. Karim or was one of our engineers working in my department and I, very sad to say he passed away after me, meeting with a um, bicycle accident about one and a half years ago. So Samson, he was the main uh, engineer working on this project. So Samson named after him in order to honor him. That is KC100. So Kareem and I had a dream for so many years we had a dream that one day the fiber rope is going to be in the field, people will be touching smoothly, easily handling it, working it, then um, I'm very happy to see if, if the dream come true. So here this is the core, control core, keep the shape, round shape and also helps for spooling. And on the one end, smooth, we call it a, this is a, a one end of, a, we are, that is a, that is a, a end termination on the boom, and this goes on the dead end on the drum, we call it a soft eye end termination. On the other end is the, the thimble splice, the one end of uh, the rope is taken and then buried here, direct buried. It's like a Chinese finger trap, a Chinese finger trap puzzle, the concept. But uh, Samson is um, uh, 
developed this, uh, this, this um, termination. So outlook. So this is what uh, we were. We I believe that we are going to be taking home. KC100 simply wrote deeply connects with the people, with the equipment, and provides fun and rewarding lifting experience. Came with the KC100 improves job site efficiency and return on investment. And uh, Manitowoc, Samson designed and validated their lifting experience. So co-creation and collaboration through innovation ecosystem speed up, creating superior customer experience at a reduced cost. Our discussion. Thank you very much for listening. Now, Jonah, we'll take some questions here. Yeah, yeah, I got. I have a good amount. I'm actually going to pass the screen over to Mike Parnell, who's on the line, and I, my apologies, Mike, I didn't introduce you at the beginning, but um, he can notate on the screen, and uh, we do have, again, uh, a few questions. I'm going to, uh, so get your screens live there, Mike. Why don't we start out with, uh, it's a two-part question from Art. Um, he first asked, do the existing drums have to be modified or replaced in order to seat or spool up synthetic rope? Okay, and I am on uh, with Sammy. Uh, Sammy, I'll just kind of annotate along with the uh, questions and then uh, please help give the responses as sure. you have the experience with uh, the grove, grove cranes and, and with the rope interaction. Yeah. The existing drum um, modification, we it is except the, the I, I I told you before the rough surfaces. Uh, there is no modification is required. We can use the existing drum except that uh, the smoothness of 300, 300 micro uh, inch uh, level. That's what the requirement is. If you are sanded or smooth it. And not only the wedge, not only the drum flange, and also the wedge wedge pocket. Uh, that should be enough. No need of um, uh, modification. Any other modification? Okay. <clears throat> so the um, so the drum in, the rope insertion point in the drum is fine, and then uh, with the rope reduction, uh, as the rope's applied to the drum, it will draw down in diameter and. Uh, fit relatively well into the grooving that might be existing on the drum. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Uh, go ahead, Jonah. Yeah, great. And the second part of Art's question was similar. It was, um, do load block shifts have to be replaced in order to properly seat the synthetic rope? Go ahead, uh, Sammy. Again, shoes not need not be replaced. We are using um, plastic nylon shoe and also the steel shoe. Uh, all the shoes are all the same shoe. I think I mentioned one of my slide. There is a no change in the shoe, hoist drum, um, etc. Except that uh, smoothness is required. Right. So if there's a burr uh, or any any kind of physical damage already in existence, I think that would be. There could be some damage to a wire rope, no doubt, uh, but also to a synthetic rope. So I think the owner of the machine would need to make sure that they have clean drums and clean shivs, right? Would that that would be a good a good guidance? Yeah, excellent idea. We developed uh, a procedure, visual inspection criteria, and then uh, how to uh, retrofit, how to modify the existing um, uh, hoist, the entire uh, hoist system, not only the, the 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 drum, and also the hook block. Even including the anti do block, etc. Um, what are things we need to look? Um, how to fix it, uh, etc. We we are we are well defined um, visually with the picture. We wrote a procedure. If anybody see the use the procedure, they can do it. It will take depending upon the damage that wire rope created, for one hour maximum two hours uh, time that they can uh, recondition. Um, for uh, that would be suitable for synthetic rope, right? And before they put synthetic rope on, they would be in contact with with 
Grove, you know, being a Grove crane, and and yep. you may be in touch with Samson, but but instead of just swapping over from steel wire rope to synthetic rope, you'd want to be contacted per machine model and to evaluate, you know, anything that you might know inherently that uh, that you'd need to give additional guidance about. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. Our crane care is after sales. We call it a crane care division. Um, are well trained. They're all aware of that. They will be the one contactor first, and then from that, uh, the system will take care of uh, how to help customers to make this a smooth transition. Good. Okay. Next question, Jonah. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, and I just got a ton of questions that came in. Uh, we are running out of time towards the hour. I think we'll have time for a couple more. Yep. So Deanne asks, <clears throat> excuse me, does replacing wire rope with synthetic rope change load charts provided with existing hoists and cranes? Go ahead. Can you repeat again, please? Sure. Does, re, does replacing wire hoist rope with synthetic rope change the load charts provided with the existing hoists and cranes? Uh, there's not a major change. Uh, however, there is a, uh, because the wire rope for some of our cranes, considered as a, a counterweight, we have to modify the load chart uh, as a random load chart that we need to give. Uh, is only for stability load chart, uh, not the main load chart, structural load chart. Um, uh, yes, they have to follow that instruction uh, for tipping. And some of other cranes, they don't even need it. The existing uh, load chart, they can use it. So based on the machine model, you'd want to double check uh, that the counterweight, there actually may need to shed a little counterweight potentially uh, or, or make a modification based on a different rope selection. Yeah. At this point of time, we are not recommending any modification on the counterweight or in our crane. We are just uh, supplying them on an addendum load chart instruction for some configuration they have to um, probably uh, uh, reduce the load, uh, not too much, it's just only bad enough uh, to be safe on, so because right. of tipping. And I, I'd like to add uh, something just a little bit, Jonah, to uh, that uh, Sammy noted, uh, ASME B30.30 .30 is a brand new under development document and it's called ROPES and it has two chapters one is wire rope and one is synthetic rope. And it's uh, probably a year, year and a half away from uh, final uh, balloting and uh, uh, entry to the marketplace is my best estimate. But uh, the entire chapter is uh, dedicated to synthetic ropes. Um, the synthetic rope usage on machines like this is not really anything new. They do uh, have been using these on digger derricks and electric utility line trucks for 20 to 30 yep. years at least. Exactly. So really, it's not. It's all not uh, uh, completely uh, uh, fresh to all the market, and they've run, they've had great success with synthetic ropes on their machines, and and so it's it's a little more into the big boy uh, cranes and the bigger production cranes that we're sort of making this huge transition, especially with the new technology and new uh, fiber selection. I think that's the big, you know, a big jump for us. So, but we're we're trying to keep up with the requirements as they as they roll out by making sure we have standards that help address inspection, maintenance, application, user information, and so on. And we we uh, we we expect this in the next year and a half or so to be able to help the industry by having a good uh, guideline. And all of the folks that uh, Sammy's mentioned, uh, the folk, the Dyneema's folks, Samson. Uh, Cortland, all kinds of uh, synthetic rope folks have been serving on this particular committee for the uh, last three years uh, as we've been getting this on its feet. So we're, we're hoping these sort of hit the market uh, strong at the, about the same time. Yeah. Uh, you got one last question, and then maybe we can send uh, the questions to Sammy and he can address those to the individual writers. Is that possible, Jonah? Yeah, I have record of everything, and my apologies to everybody on the line. Thank you for your questions. There's some good ones we can't get to. Um, 
why don't we wrap it up with this one from Jeff. He asks, does the KZ100 material have favorable electrical insulating properties to protect workers in the event of electrical contact with the rope? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the synthetic, uh, these are fiber is, we all know is non-conductor. However, in the constructor, in a rope form, um, if it is a wet, and uh, also the any uh, steel gravel or any metallic parts get inside the rope, uh, that still a little bit of uh, conductive. Um, but we don't want, um, we don't recommend people to uh, use it near the um, power line. Um, even though it is not that much conductive compared to wire rope, but because of the, the given condition, a lot of other uh, particulate, metallic particulate, or even water, that may cause this um, uh, become a conductive. So it's not regarded as uh, totally um, non-conductive. Yep. I mean, I, I don't know of anything. We often get asked to use non-conductive tag lines for rigging operations. Um, the minute it gets dirty or wet, it becomes conductive or semi-conductive. Uh, there's just almost nothing that, in our in our you know, knuckle, you know, boots on the ground type industry that is purely non-conductive. You'd almost have to have an insulating link, uh, the, you know, well tested and well approved. But uh, there's no magic bullet here for things for non-conductivity. Uh, exactly. And, and, you know, so. It's, we just have to stay realistic about what the what the rope's properties offer to us and and what it can do for us. Okay, that's good stuff. Thanks to both you guys for handling those questions. Again, uh, my apologies. There's about five more that I wish we had time to ask um, on the air, but I get I'll they'll be addressed um, offline. And with Sammy's permission, of course, um, we can post all the questions on the recording page. That will be updated within 24 hours. We did record today's session. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of great information in there. Um, Sammy, again, thank you so much um, for agreeing to do this and, and putting the, your presentation together. Um, I know. It's not a surprise that I learned a lot. I'm sure a lot of the people on the on the line did as well. And uh, yeah, and Mike, thank you for for uh, addressing those questions with Sammy. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, uh, everybody who joined in this conference. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing everybody on an, on our next webinar. And uh, thanks for joining us. And we appreciate your participation and. Uh, any questions that you have, get to Jonah. It's J-O-N-A-H at ITI.com. And uh, they'll get forwarded to Sammy. And uh, between he and uh, Manitowoc Grove and Samson, they would like to try to give you know a good response to you. Jonah, is there a way to uh, share those questions and responses to all the attendees? Uh, yeah. But my plan was to gather them. And we can I can either email them out to everybody who registered or we can post uh, the actual the question and answer on the uh, resource page with the recording oh. once that once that's okay. uh, up and running. All right. Well, as you know, uh, I'm I'm one of the old guys in the industry, and so I don't know about all the technological uh, opportunities that we have for communicating with everybody. So I'm sure you'll help make sure we get uh, back in touch with everybody. It, even though someone didn't pose a question, it's nice if they participate that they, they would be able to see the uh, exchange between parties. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us. And we sure look forward to it. John, go ahead and close this out. And, and I appreciate your hosting us today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.